Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, we've been hesitating just because there's still a lot of people outside, but we're also running out of time. So uh, <laughs> we may uh, just kind of slow roll into it, and uh, y'all will get all the best info, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, so we thought we'd just uh, start with some introductions. Um, well, I guess since I'm talking, I'll keep going. Uh, I'm David Miner from UC San Diego, where I'm director of the Research Data Curation Program. Uh, I'm Jan Drasel from University of Göttingen in Germany. I'm head of research and development and also scientific head of something that we call e-research alliance that I will introduce in a minute. Yep, and uh, we're actually pretty excited to talk to you today about uh, collaboration we've been, our institutions, our libraries and university of, universities, excuse me, have had for almost a decade now uh, to go over some of the things we've done, what we're doing now, and where we hope to go in the future. Uh, so, well, this is our content slide. We just finished the introduction. We're going to talk a little bit about how we started, uh, why we started, what we were talking about and interesting in doing, um, what we've been doing in the last five years or so, and then where we are today and where we're going to be going into the future. So what are we talking about? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of words on this slide. but. Um, this actually started, believe it or not, uh, at CNI, this collaboration, in around 2015. Uh, as it often does, it was probably in a hotel bar at about 11 o'clock at night. A bunch of us were sitting, talking about the work we've been doing, and uh, especially with uh, Wolfram Horstmann, uh, director of the library at Göttingen, and uh, several of us at San Diego. And we realized two interesting things simultaneously. One is, in many ways, our organizations are very different the way we're organized, the way we work with our constituents, and the way we uh, work internally. But we had a lot of goals that were extremely similar in the things that we were trying to tackle. And so we thought, well, this might be an interesting way to do kind of some compare and contrast, see where we're at and improve both of our models. And so we actually did officialize this in a memorandum of, of understanding in 2016, renewed in 2019. We're still under that MOU as we sit here today, that was the second one was a five year. And as you'll see, uh, what we'll be talking about today is talking certainly about our support models internally, relationships between our libraries and the campus that surround us, and our overall goals and objectives. Thank you. Uh, so I have a slide up, we have a couple just intro on our campuses. These are not because we think you don't know our campuses necessarily, but I, just to highlight a couple of things that are kind of particularly relevant to the collaboration. Um, UC San Diego is a very young campus, founded in the early 60s, um, and we've experienced a phenomenal growth, especially in the last decade. Our student body has almost doubled in 10 years, uh, from about 28, 29,000 to almost 45,000. Uh, we have seen ex a parallel growth in, I guess, everything <laughs> uh, that comes in, and this, of course, impacts the library and the services that we offer. And so a big focus we've had is how do we scale up, how do we support this increasingly not just large but highly diverse campus uh, that's becoming even more diverse. Um, at the same time, two things worth mentioning. Uh, the campus did have a very early commitment to research data, research data management, a lot of things that we work on. Uh, the program that I am currently working in, the data curation program, was started in the library almost 15 years ago now, which if you think about, that was pretty remarkable at those times. At the same time, a research campus IT group was spun up in parallel to the library work, and we have a number of cross-campus collaborate, collaborative groups. Excuse me. Uh, just within the library specifically, just a 30-second snapshot, um, we are a highly matrixed organization. Uh, but what I mean by that is we have a lot of uh, staff and librarians who report up through different programs in the library, so have multiple bosses and multiple um, agendas and portfolios. Uh, and our programs, the work that we do in our programs uh, crosses these, these boundaries too. So our digital library program actually has six different pillars involved with it uh, to be able to support it. Um, we, as I've already said, we have significant campus collaborators, research IT, the San Diego Supercomputer Center uh, is a part of our university. They do a huge amount, you, well, you heard them name called uh, from Cliff's speech this morning, they do a huge amount in this area. Uh, and uh, probably our largest other partner on campus is the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, one of the bellwether climate uh, science organizations in the world. Obviously, we have significant connections within the UC. Uh, some of our partners uh, are here from LA and uh, Santa Barbara and other campuses, uh, and that's always a big driver in our conversations. 
And we work very closely with the California Digital Library to help us to supply a lot of the fundamental infrastructure and services that we work on. Uh, just quickly, uh, and you probably can't read that, that's fine, it actually doesn't matter. Uh, I just wanted to show that, and I think all of our campuses could put up charts like this, that the growth in our services, both collections that we house and the services that we provide are growing exponentially. Um, the last chart on the bottom right, I think, is the, the upcoming, the cliff up. Is there an opposite of a cliff? The, the wall to scale <laughs> we've been expecting for many years is definitely hitting now. Um, so th these are not specific to this talk, but just kind of a general sense of where we're at right now. Yeah, as, uh, as you be getting in, and I uh, apologize for my voice, I'm still recovering from an infect for quite some time, so that's why my voice is breaking all the time, uh, but I hope it will work. Um, so University of Göttingen is a bit older than San Diego. We were founded in 1736, and um, it was actually, um, it had a brilliant past. It was a center of a lot of natural sciences, and uh, there once was a study saying that 45 Nobel Prize laureates um, until 1950 had some connection to Göttingen. So it was a very prestigious university, and the university library is even two years older than the university, founded in 1734. It's one of the largest in Germany, but what's also interesting is that it actually was the first science library in the world because it was the first library that actually tried to require books on a systematic and uh, scientific scale. And you see our buildings, we have some very old, very beautiful buildings. The top one is the main university building and the one uh, at the bottom is the main library building or the historic library building. Um, we also have a similarity with um, San Diego, one of the many that we have. We also have a big campus that has a lot of extra universal organizations. So we have uh, some Max Planck institutions, some other uh, research institutions, so we're very much research oriented. And uh, in Göttingen itself, it's not only the library, but a lot of different research organizations. Uh, in um, number-wise, uh, the city of Göttingen has around 80,000 people and we have 40,000 students. So more or less, whenever you go downtown, you meet people, everybody is somehow involved with the library, uh, with the university. Concerning research data, we have also been active in research data for quite a long time. So 15 years ago, we actually, the university gave a research data policy as one of the first institutions in Germany. And 10 years ago, we founded something called the e-research alliance, called ERA. And that's actually the two one-stop to go place for any RDM questions that the researchers have. And our focus always has been from the beginning to offer best RDM support for the researchers. And um, one of the ideas about the era was that um, at that time, library uh, RDM services were scattered around libraries, IT departments, university administration, and we wanted to put it on a central place, but uh, not label it as a library service or an IT service, because we know that researchers are very biased. So we created something neutral, the e-research alliance, so that a researcher just knows the ERA is there for my RDM support and I don't care if it's the library or IT department behind it. So it's a virtual organization that actually is operated by the library, by the IT department and by the university administration. And we have a focus on offering services, consultation, teaching and networking on all aspects of research data management. Um, additionally, and that's very nice, since last year the library had, has an appointed professor for analysis of information resources. And that has been also tremendously helpful in um, helping us to bring up all, a lot of very interested research uh, topics because we've always been a very strong research-oriented library and now with our own professor, it's even more so. <clears throat> and also something special about Germany. In Germany, something is happening, some of you might have heard it, since five years called the NFDI, which stands for National Research Data Infrastructures. So there's a nationwide, nationwide program to um, create uh, collaborations, domain-specific collaborations in dealing with research data, and that's called the NFDI. And the, currently there are 25 NFDI consortia out there in Germany, divided into different disciplines, and Göttingen is involved with 18 from these 25. So I also have some numbers, but only to briefly show you the variety of things we're doing. So concerning services, we, for example, operate a central research data repository that's um, 
on the left side, we call it uh, Grow Data. All our services are under the umbrella of Grow, which stands for Göttingen Research Online. And you see that we have a tremendous increase in download statistics, upload statistics, and different users. Um, up there, we have the Grow identifiers. We assign data set DOIs and other identifiers to the data sets. Um, down there on the right is something interesting. It's called Grow Instruments. So we also operate in a portal for large instruments. So for all the instruments that are used on campus, there is an entry in a database and people can actually find out what instruments we have. They can book the instruments. And that's, of course, tremendously important if you look for certain instruments or if you actually make a funding because you have to know what already is there on campus. And also, last but not least, we have Grow Plan, which is a portal for uh, data management plans. And um, I'm very proud, especially on the top right corner, because this is the consultation that we do. So most of our work is actually whenever somebody at the campus, at the university, wants to write a proposal, and most of the proposals somehow deal with research data, they come up to us and ask, I need a data management plan. What how can you help me in write this paragraph about research data? That's what we do. So we do consultation of the projects. We write them some paragraphs on research data. And of course, we have services. So whenever somebody writes a proposal in Göttingen, they know they already have a research data infrastructure for a repository. They have identifiers. They have, we have teaching. We have different courses, some data carpentries. So they already can write this into their proposal. And that's, of course, is very beneficial for the proposals. So that's, that's kind of it for the, the general background and the context. Uh, but, but to the collaboration, and once, as I said, we realized that we had overlapping and quite different things that we wanted to talk about, we set about putting together some questions uh, for our respective organizations that we wanted to look for, uh, look at uh, during this collaboration. So uh, from UCSD's perspectives, we had a number of initial questions. Uh, we still are working through a lot of these questions, I think it's fair to say, too. So as I mentioned, our campus is growing exponentially. So what does that actually mean? Actually, how do we support that? How do we model those needs within a camp, within a library, which is in some sense uh, still kind of traditionally based, uh, but we have that kind of highly matrixed organization. What does that mean? How do we best support campus? Um, I really resonate with Jan's point of having a central office where a researcher just says, I need the research, I need help with my research. They don't know I need to call the library or the IT department or this. What does that look like? Um, it kind of closely tied to that, what potential new library walls are emerging around these new needs? What does that look like? How do we best support campus um, requirements? Uh, the second, uh, the third one here, and this is something I, I think Jan will talk about in just a moment a bit more. One of the things that we were really fascinated about when, when he was talking about ERA and the way that they support campus users is they're very much project-based. And they get very, very, very tightly intertwined with their projects. Uh, and that's a fascinating model for us, uh, coming from more of a, someone shows up, we give them a thing, and they go away, right? Uh, and so what does that look like, and how do we best support that? Uh, and then the last one, and this is interesting both kind of U.S. to Europe, if you will, but sitting in San Diego, potentially U.S. to Mexico, what legal issues are there for sharing data across borders, for uh, using data that maybe house one place and another place, um, and what does service management look like uh, in that environment? We also started with some initial questions that were um, overlapping also, additional questions, and as I said, one of the fundamental questions we had was how can we ensure that the researchers get the best RDM services? And um, because we see that this is a, a strength and a benefit, especially in comparison to other universities, if you can give your researchers the best um, services they had. And as I said, when our researchers write a proposal and they know from the beginning they already have the repository checked, the training courses checked, the um, data policy checked, and this, of course, is very beneficial for the success of their proposal. Um, the other thing is that um, as you, as it, it also is in San Diego, um, there already when we started were a lot of different infrastructures and services. And so from the beginning, it was also the question, how we, can we combine them? And as I said, that's where the idea came of this virtual umbrella and just give them a new face, a non-biased, neutral face, and then combine the existing ones. And, um, and in, another interesting aspect was that um, we... As I said, we wanted to help the researchers from the moment they started writing the proposal. So how can we integrate this in the existing proposal pipeline? And that has a lot of different aspects. Um, one of them, for example, is that we work closely with the university administration. Because in Germany, there are some large-scale project 
proposals by the German Research Foundation that are several millions of euros funding, and these proposals actually have to be signed in not by individual researchers, but by the university itself. So we're aware from the beginning that these proposals come up, and then we, at a very early stage, we are just one partner of the proposal process. And um, that and also, that also includes the, the last point. Um, there were a lot of proposals when individual researchers write their proposal, and mostly they don't know that we're already existing. I just had a situation two weeks ago that somebody called me up and said, they need a data management plan for a proposal that's due in two days. And they just, in panic, contact the administration. They said, well, talk to the AWA guys. And of course we help them, but this is not ideal. Ideally, we want to be involved from the beginning. And so that's always the main question, how can we be more visible for the researchers that they already know what's, what's out there? And of course, last but not least, not last in this thought, but second to last, where can we go beyond the state of the art? And that's something where we always have been interested in working with San Diego from the beginning to combine our ideas, learn from each other, and then just do something that's a bit beyond what's already existing. So what have we done and <clears throat> where are we? Uh, so actually these four we're gonna be stepping through in the, the following slides, but uh, there are our fearless leaders. Um, so this was the signing of the most recent MOU in uh, 2019. 2019. Wow. Um, and so uh, multiple years of talking, a lot of things, staff exchanges, technical discussions, and a lot of organizational planning. So maybe we can go ahead. So um, as, wow, I think I was wearing that same outfit that I am right now. <clears throat> wow, okay. Um, Your wife is gonna kill you. Uh, um, so uh, just, just some snapshots here. Uh, so obviously we have as re regular calls, I mean now Zoom calls, uh, as we all do around the world. Um, these are actually shots uh, from events in Göttingen in various places on campus in Germany. Uh, so we have attended uh, meetings. We have actually done significant staff exchanges. Uh, and that's really something we see as a benefit and we would really like to do a lot more of in the future, which is it's one thing to be on a Zoom call or to be in a presentation and to see a chart and talk about things. It's another thing to spend a week with someone. What are you doing? Why did you do that? <laughs> Why did you tell that person that? Those kinds of things. Um, and so that's something we're very interested in continuing to do and to do more of. Uh, closely as part of that, not surprisingly, a lot of technical discussions. Uh, some examples here, just looking at our infrastructures, how data flows into it who has access to it, who's, who owns it on campus, right? who can set policy for it. Uh, we've also had talked in the past, and, and I'm hoping we can start talking again in the future too, we had uh, on that cross-border uh, legal issue front, we talked a lot about um, preservation of data. So in San Diego, we run a digital preservation service, Chronopolis, and we wanted to see what would it look like to put a bunch of German state papers into Chronopolis? What does that mean and who can look at them and things like that? Uh, I've already mentioned staff exchanges. These are just some photographs. Uh, sometimes you can get a little silly, but that's okay. Um, and uh, the one actually I want to highlight here, which will go into the next slide, is um, Jan there has an affiliate UCSD badge because he took a sabbatical in the fall of 2019 and came and spent two months, three, two months with us in San Diego in the research data program, shadowing us, giving us advice, and um, next slide. And we actually did a five-year organizational strategic planning for research data support that, that Jan, Jan and I led, we co-led for the program. Uh, and you can actually see uh, kind of real-world work happening here. And you can't see it because it's really small, but the spreadsheet in the back, the last year is, we're still now in the last year of this organizational planning. <laughs> so a lot of the work that actually Jan did and helped us to define, we're still in the middle of uh, in San Diego. So this isn't theoretical, this is actually, this is what people are doing, is based on the collaborations that we had. Should I just keep going? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so one thing, we did have an interruption, you may recall. Uh, so a lot of the big um, meeting events we've had, uh, as it was in the beginning, uh, are centered around CNI. The first one was in 2015. The March of 2020, we had a whole team from Germany coming to San Diego for the San Diego CNI meeting, and uh, that really didn't happen. Um, so we are just now really ramping up a lot of this work. Uh, we've started again with our monthly catch-ups. Um, the data science collaboration I won't mention because we're gonna have a whole slide on it in just a section. 
And we're certainly looking at the landscape now is very different than a decade ago, especially in the US, the OSTP memo, things like that. What does that actually look like for the work we need to do? Yeah, and so we are already identified the next steps that we're going to do. Um, uh, we uh, also talking about my, my sabbatical there and the um, staff exchange. That's of, of course something that we continue to do to actually walk into each other um, other's shoes to learn what we're doing, uh, share experience. Um, we also have some topics that we want to share. Um, of course, there's some of them are scientific topics, as I mentioned, our professorship for uh, analyzation of information resources. There are some courses that are very, very much of interest for the folks at UCSD and vice versa. Um, one thing that we're very excited about is that we just more or less shaped the structure for an academic exchange of students um, because uh, it's a situation that, that we love where we see that all the places are all the tiles are in place, we just have to connect them somehow. For example, at the UCSD, there is a, uh, for the data science master's students, there are mandatory projects. So they have to make a project to actually get their credit in their master course. And at Göttingen University, there is a tradition in the computer sciences that we propose projects to our students that they have to take and get credit for. And it's um, from an administrative point of view, actually no problem to include um, our projects into the curriculum at UCSD and also vice versa to have pro projects, pro project ideas from the University of California library and offer them to our students. So that's the next step that we hopefully will start uh, next year where we actually will invite our students to take projects at the other universities and uh, work on different themes because there's also some funding for that, uh, especially in Germany. Uh, there are, for example, special funds to send uh, students from Germany over, overseas to work on different um, projects. Um, one example, for example, is a project when we have a master's thesis applied to a German student. He can actually work on this master thesis abroad. We only need professors at California at UCSD that actually take care of the students and then they get funded from the German government to stay some half a year abroad. So that's a project that we already successfully had with the NIH in Tokyo, in Japan, and now we want to widen this up to the UCSD. And um, uh, also, as I mentioned, I, I spent some time in San Diego. We, uh, we were just planning the staff exchange from colleagues from California to Göttingen when the pandemic hit. So that's something we want to definitely want to um, uh, keep up again. Uh, David mentioned that uh, next year CNI will be in San Diego, and um, so we plan some staff exchange around that. And hopefully, also, um, when some of these points, especially the academic exchange, uh, are actually in bloom and we start them, we would love to share this with you as well. So um, if we're accepted, then we hopefully will present some of the next steps at the next CNI in San Diego combined with our face to face meeting. And of course, the technical discussions that we started, um, we have to re-examine them again. Uh, and so that's kind of essentially it for the content, uh, but just, just a couple lessons in, in where we are, and, and Jan has really kind of laid the foundation for this. Um, so obviously this, this is, I'm a little preacher to the choir a little bit here, but certainly even in the, the eight, nine years we've been doing this, we've seen a rapid uptake of the, our services in our libraries on our campus. And so it really is time for a, a relook at where we are and where our campuses are and what that looks like. Um, so yay, we are still keep doing that. Um, but also, as, as David said in the beginning, um, we are pretty different as university libraries, but we're also very similar. We have a lot of very similar issues, although we in completely different landscapes, uh, we, can, we can actually learn a lot from each other. And that's something that we, um, we, we love to see, that how we differently approach certain topics and why sometimes this is an, an, another good way of doing things. Uh, yeah, and so uh, the other thing we've learned is, again, kind of uh, going down into the differences, it's been fascinating to talk to an organization that in many ways operates completely differently, both in terms of funding, both in terms of how staffing is handled, the relationship to the university. And it, it really provides an interesting foil back to us, I, I will say probably on, on uh, the Göttingen side too, to say, well, why are we doing it that way? <laughs> we just assume it. Uh, but look, they're doing it a completely different way. Uh, and so that's been really, really fascinating and very helpful for us. Um, and it, it still shapes a lot of the work that we do on a daily basis. Because after all, I mean, we are, we are local institutions, we look, deal with local researchers, but what they're doing actually is science. They're dealing with information, and science information is something global. So um, 
therefore the connection has to be global as well and that's beneficial for all of us Yep. And then uh, lastly, uh, as already been mentioned, and I think most people know, uh, CNI is back in San Diego in a little over three months. Um, we are definitely, hopefully not going to have another stoppage like we did last time. So we will have a whole team of people. Uh, and we would love both at CNI, perhaps, or around CNI, if there are other people who are interested in, in talking about this collaboration, working on this collaboration, being a part, we're, we're all in. Uh, especially as we look at these kind of academic exchanges and student exchanges, I think there's a real interesting opportunity there. So come to San Diego, spend your money, please. <laughs> Buy a lot of gas. It's, we need to, yeah, uh, yeah and, and, and that's it. Um, I think we're in time, but we don't have much time for questions. But of course, it would be a sin without giving you opportunity to come up with questions if you have some. Yeah, Please. And there's a microphone right behind you there. There you go. <laughs> That's a picture of San Diego, but anyway, um, uh, we don't have snow in the background. Uh, so um, the question I have is, would you be willing to share your MOU? And when you talk about um, um, sabbaticals, did you have to provide housing? How, when you do this exchange with staff, how does this, this work? And by the way, Teresa Bird from the University of San Diego. So um, we're happy to share the uh, MOU, of course. Um, yeah. When I did my sabbatical in San Diego, um, the University of Göttingen was covering a part of my expenses. Not much, but, but some of the expenses and the other expenses was, was taken over by me because I took my family with me. So it was also a family event and that was worth spending money, of course. Um, as I mentioned, um, there were in Germany there are certain programs to actually fund German master and PhD students to go to San Diego for half a year, and they actually can cover most of their expenses through this funding program. And um, I also understand that there are some funds by the German government also for Californian students if they want to come over to Göttingen for some time. I don't think they cover everything, but there is some additional funding for that. Uh, Yes, and there was something I was going to add on top of that. So when you come to Göttingen, who will pay for that? <laughs> that's right. Oh, I know what it was. Um, so actually, that's a very pressing question, because one of the challenges we have had, and one of the reasons we're very excited about the kind of student exchange is, at least at our university, um, uh, library to library staff exchanges are not normal. Faculty to faculty are more normal. And so we had an office on campus. They're like, <clears throat> if you're a faculty, great. Here's a bunch of money. Take your time off, go do it. I'm exaggerating a little bit. But generally speaking, um, in the library, they're like, we don't know who you are. Like, because, right, it's a very different mindset. And so that's something that's been a challenge on our end at UCSD is kind of working, navigating that space. Um, so. We, uh, we've had for individual, a week here, two weeks here, a couple days here, not the longer term, multiple months kinds of things. So I'm Steve from Yale. Um, Steve, so, Steve used to work at San Diego too. I did. I'm a plant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Yale has been incredibly slow to bring up any kind of research data management or research data curation system. Um, we just haven't had one for years. Now with the federal mandates, uh, NIS, all of a sudden everybody is very interested in this. So I'm thinking of between the scale that you're having the scale up at UCSD and putting yourself into the sort of project pipeline or the grant pipeline that uh, John did, what can you do to throttle expectations? Because now we put Dataverse up and everybody's like, oh, just give everybody with a net ID access to it. And we're like, that's probably a terrible idea. Um, so do you have any advice or any kind of uh, strategies for making this a much more orderly ramp up when you're seeing huge increases in demand for the service? And sure, you have some staffing for that. So first of all, identify people who are willing to to do this as, as people and then make sure that, there's, that, that these are staffed because what, what usually happens is that you... You find one or two volunteers, one librarian, one IT guy, and they do this in the part time next to their day to day job. So take it seriously from the beginning, get some 
involved in this full time as the research data person at Yale and then ideally give him some additional staffing. I think that's my, my first advice. Yeah, and I would say one thing and is in a way you're lucky, <laughs> or lucky is quite not the right word, but one of the challenges we're having right now at UCSD, and I think this is probably true at a lot of places, is we've built a lot of infrastructure, physical and staffing, for needs from 10 years ago. And they're not the same as the needs in 2024. And so we have a lot of exercises coming up to kind of reframe, remodel. A lot of the questions we had in here like, how do we actually serve a campus in 2024, which is not the same as it was when we started? And so a lot of the kind of greenfield exercises, we're starting to step back and say, okay, well, if we were to, not that we are starting over again, but like what would we do and how might that change how we think about what we're offering? Again, that mode of we want to try to get out of we've always done it this way, so we need to just keep doing it that way. Not necessarily the best way. Okay, so thank you very much right, for listening. I think we have already the next session coming up. Thank you.